lot of that is making sure that you're expressing what your need is in a clear manner. And it's not just about telling the husband that, oh, I need this. It's about helping them even one step further. Honey, this is how I need to experience this need. Could you help me here? In this world that's filled with so much noise and information, how do we really stand out and be who we were really meant to be? In this podcast, we focus on injecting you with positivity, optimism, and strategies all centered around helping you be who you were always meant to be in business and life. Be inspired to show up in your own skin to learn strategies, habits, and skills from others as we share our own life journeys and stories. There's no other you, and you know yourself better than anyone else. So be prepared to take away habitual tidbits, tactics that will encourage you to pursue and live your life, not the one others want you to live. Welcome to Stand Out Be You, where you don't have to be perfect, you just have to be you. Because we all want to feel loved, and we can't stop talking about love, we had to continue this to part two with Rocky Lee, Relationship Specialist. If you did not get to hear part one, please go back and search out that episode. But we're moving forward because he is about to tell us how we could still be dated in our relationships and in our marriages when we get up to five years plus. So stay tuned. Here's Rocky Lee. We talked about the single individual. We talked about the individual. You're the marriage, you know, specialist. Now this woman or this man has gotten to now the seven, let's say the 10 year period. I think at this time, it's really great when you do involve a mediator because your needs change because by this time, you've probably had the children. And again, listeners, I've been all of these women and all these individuals I'm talking about. So now, you know, you've seven to 10 years, you've got the children, the needs have changed. You know, you can't even get him to listen to you because a kid is right here next to you interrupting or whatever. So you have to put little things in place like touch my hand so I acknowledge you little one and then I'll get to you. But you still want to be that for your spouse. How does that work? How does that, how does an individual keep that love there? Because I'm all about the love. (laughs) Yeah, same here. You know, it's actually pretty simple. Everything that I talk about in relationship parallels business. Mm -hmm. Because really how we approach business in the world, we all do it in a very unique way. And I shouldn't say unique, in a very common way. And we never challenge that process. Mm -hmm. And so when we approach relationships, we actually approach it completely different than what is what we see in nature. So I'll give an example. So when a couple is seven, 10 years in their marriage, what's going on is that patterns and behaviors are starting to set in. And instead of setting a system and plan to interrupt those patterns and behaviors, we don't have one. So those patterns and behaviors carry on. And then we pretty soon think that this is normal. We pretty soon assume that our partner, oh my gosh, this is what he was like all the time. I just didn't know that. And it just wasn't the truth. It was just that over time, these patterns and behaviors have caused each of us to be programmed to behave a certain way, to react a certain way. Mm -hmm. So how you interrupt that is you create systems. And so systems can be really simple. It could be like rules. So I have seven rules of engagement for couples when it comes to conflict. If you have these rules in place, so one of my favorite is rule number three. It's called the law of positive intent. And the rule stipulates that if my wife comes out and starts yelling at me and thinks I'm crazy and starts judging me and blaming me for something, that underneath, I'm going to hold my breath and I'm going to declare to myself quietly, my partner loves me and she wants to get close to me and she has all the right intentions for me. She just doesn't know how to say it. That simple rule is a system. Mm -hmm. And the minute I have that system, now I no longer have to guess when conflict arises. Mm -hmm. So it's just simply having that stuff. I have another group of rules I call like the fabulous 10. And it's just 10 things that you could do every day that are really simple. So one of them is like, When's the last time you looked into your spouse in a really naughty way? 
Yeah. <laughs> no words. Just you looked straight in the eyes in a very naughty way. No words. Mm -hmm. Like that's really difficult because in our world, we're so used to thinking that love is communicated purely just by words. Exactly. And yeah. it's not. When's the last time your husband's come by and held your hands in a really special way? Right. It wasn't just the casual, oh, I'm just going to pick up your hands. No, no. It's like he took the time to come over to you wherever you're standing in your house and he grabbed your hands and he held that for a very special five seconds. Yeah. And he didn't even say anything. These are really simple systems and rules that if you create them and you implement them for marriages within the seven and 10 years, this is what keeps it alive. Yeah, right. I totally agree. I totally agree. That's one thing that I had to have. That was like one of the rules. And you just said like a business. And I told you a little bit of my story with me. Yeah. And my husband is I said, I set it up like a whole entire interview process, you know, yeah. online and I had all of the the candidates and I said, okay, I need to have 20 top candidates, got them. And my husband ended up making it all the way down to number one. However, I was basing it on the different things I needed and whether or not he can make it through like what you just said, the systems of what we needed. But I also not only focused on my systems is I wanted to know what his systems were because maybe I don't fit into your business or your system of whatever is in you because we're so different as people. Okay. No two people this are the same. This is perfect that you brought this up. Let me help you reframe the whole concept okay. of business and marriage. Okay. This is what I tell couples now. Imagine I just met you and your husband when you guys are just engaged in dating. Okay. Mm -hmm. so this is what I would tell you guys. Yeah. I would say that each one of you guys are small business owners. Mm -hmm. You both have the same clientele. You guys have the same service and the same products. Mm -hmm. And you guys are about five blocks away from each other yeah. in the same city. And you guys have the same cost and you guys are making the same profit and you guys are making the same loss on your profit margin. Right. One day you guys have to bump into each other at a fast food restaurant. Yeah. And you guys are like, Hey, you're that person. Hey, you're that person. And you guys connect and you start comparing numbers. Mm -hmm. And pretty soon you guys are like, why don't we just combine? Why don't we just amalgamate yeah. and save ourselves the loss so we can lower the loss, we can increase our profits, mm -hmm. right? And yeah. our cost won't be as much. So you guys thought, oh, brilliant idea. Let's do that. Let's merge our businesses together. Well, just as you're doing that, a large corporation comes by called marriage. Yeah. <laughs> and marriage looks upon you guys and marriage says, wow, I see potential here. Mm -hmm. I'm loving what I see. So marriage comes along and pitches you an idea. And the idea is we'd like to buy you guys out, but we don't want you to leave. We want to buy you guys out and we want to make you guys senior partners of our company. Now we want you to continue to manage what you're doing because you're really that good at it. And you guys agree. You're like, wow, what an amazing deal. Let's do it. So you guys throw it all in. And now you're in the company called marriage, the marriage corporation. What happens is when conflict starts to arise, when needs are not being met, we default to our small business practice. We default to our protocols, our policies, our rules and systems as a small business. Never works. Because you're not a part of that anymore. Right. You're in a company called Marriage Incorporation. Now, if you would let go of your small business protocols, policies, rules, and if you just simply trusted the system under marriage, if you've trusted the marriage protocols, the marriage system, the marriage rules, you'll solve the conflict. Yeah, so true. And, and that's how it works, is when we're willing to let go of our single life mentality, what we believe that we could still have. That's where conflicts come in from. It's us really saying underneath, I want to still be single. I want yeah. a bit of my freedom, but I want it with this good looking guy right next to me. <laughs> so, that's, so true. Right? right? That's really what it's all about. And so we get into these fights and arguments and they're so petty. And really like once the dust has settled and everybody's cooled down in their corners, you realize how silly that was. And what was that all about? It was just simply us saying, I wanted to be single again for like two hours. <laughs> and it was the conflict was our partner keeping us in check saying, 
what are you talking about? We're married. <laughs> like, you got me. I'm going nowhere. And we're fighting that. We don't want to be honest and see that. So we kind of throw it up as kind of like, oh, it's a character flaw. Oh, man, my partner. Oh, boy. I didn't see that one. <laughs> it does happen so much like that. And I think that was part of my systems. My husband knows. He's like, hey, honey. Go take a break. Go meet a girlfriend. Go have a cup of coffee. Yeah. I love that about him because he gets me. But that was in the beginning of setting up the business that way, right. setting up the That's operation, right. the marriage corporation. We That's did right. that. And I have to tell you, as I said, I've been all of these ladies that I'm bringing up here, is that I didn't always have that. I actually was married before. And I didn't put a lot of these systems in there. He was not a bad guy. He's a great guy, but I didn't have those systems in place. It took me 13 years to get to a point where I knew I had the systems that I wanted to have in place for me. I just needed to have that other person that was going to be my partner and make sure that we could both really blend those systems together. That's right. When I work with couples and I do their premarital, one of the main things that I help them focus on is what their vision is for their marriage. Yeah. And it's amazing how so many marriages, I would say almost 90% of marriages out there do not have a long-term vision of what their marriage looks like. Now, I'm not just talking about, hey, in 10 years, are we going to go to Hawaii? That's a type of vision, but that's not the vision that's going to sustain. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about what kinds of attitudes and behaviors do we want to not accept or accept in our marriage? That's a vision. Right. In the midst of conflict, how are we going to handle that? Yeah. How do I see my wife right now versus in the midst of conflict? Am I writing that vision out of who she is? These visions are what keeps us on track right. when things just look really cloudy. Yeah. And we're so used to going by our feelings that our feelings can't be trusted because yeah. our feelings will go based on the story that we tell it. And that's what we don't realize. <laughs> if we have a story of like, oh man, love's got to look like this. And then we don't feel it. That's where people start checking out of their marriages because they're thinking, I've fallen out of love. I'm clearly not feeling it. And it's not looking like this. Right. And so my question is always, well, what if that's not even the right story? Exactly. And if you're looking at someone else's, you don't know their complete story. And you just said falling out of love. That needs to be one of the systems. When you feel like you're falling out of love, figure out how to fall back in love. Yeah. You know, that's yeah. one of the things that I had lined up. I'm like, dude, if I start feeling like this, I'm going to be straight up honest with you. I'm like, listen, I'm not really liking you a little bit right now. We need to figure this out. <laughs> yeah. I mean, just throw it in here to help people understand who are listening. There's the difference between us getting angry mm -hmm. with our partner, but falling out of love. Let's define that. Yeah. Falling out of love really means that I've become so familiar with my partner, I'm no longer curious. Mm, yeah. That's all that falling out of love really means. But we make it out to be this grandioso fairy tale thing like, oh my God, he's just not the one anymore. Yeah. And that's just not true. All that we're really saying to ourselves when we say, hey, honey, I'm falling out of love. All it means is that I've gotten so familiar with you, I've stopped being curious. I've stopped discovering who you are. I've stopped making you important in my life. I've stopped loving you as important. Yeah. This I can see as my woman or my friend, girlfriend that's listening right now that may be in their 40s, 50s. They've been in a marriage now. Let's fast forward 20 plus years. This is kind of what happens. We stop becoming intrigued with each yeah. other. That's exactly it. We allow life to go on. And we don't advance our marriage. And so we, in a sense, it's been our fault where we've actually made our marriage boring. It's mm -hmm. not our partner. If you think back, like how we first met our partners, you could not get yourself off the phone talking with the person. Mm -hmm. You know, that was it. It was like, you're done. You knew you're going to be on the line all night and you yeah. just might get up tomorrow morning and realize I don't know how to turn the alarm off. <laughs> like it's just, exactly. it's, that's, you know, like that crazy. And after years of marriage, when we don't, keep up with how to keep our marriage fresh mm -hmm. it just becomes boring and that's really what falling out of love really means and the sad thing is that when we label it i've fallen out of love our actual physical reaction is that we blame the other person we never take the responsibility 
So falling out of love is just simply code for me. It's a sign that, hey, you need to start taking responsibility for getting curious about your partner again and right. spicing it up. Right. All Rocky, this is stand out for you. I feel like it goes back to that. And we kind of talked a little bit before. We should have started recording in the beginning before we even got on here. It goes back to you recognizing you of what your needs are and what you want. All of it comes back right. to you standing out and being you, even inside of your relationships. That's right. That's, that's right. why I wanted to have you on this show. <laughs> no, that's bang on. The privilege that I have as a relationship coach is that it's not just about the traditional sense of relationships because the truth is is that you can't have a healthy relationship if you don't have a healthy relationship with yourself it starts there yeah it really does so it's a trickle effect if you want a really loving relationship with somebody whether you're married or not it starts with loving you with yourself it starts loving yourself caring about yourself yeah once that's in, intact once that's in place once that's moving loving somebody is really not that big of a leap when you get to that place, the next step of uncovering dreams, longings in your heart, yeah. that's the next step. It's amazing. The signs are all in front of us, right? Tequila, like we have millionaires all around us. They've achieved their business goals, but they're not satisfied mm -hmm. because the goals themselves weren't what they really needed. Yeah. What they really needed was something else. Yeah. And it's the same thing when you flip it the other way around. Now you got people who can't achieve their goals because they're not getting what they really need in life. They're too busy comparing, right? It's the grass is greener on the other side, right? Yeah, exactly. And so we think, oh, I can't have that. Or we think like, oh, how can he get that? It's greener on the other side because they actually watered it. They mowed yeah. the lawn. They fertilized it. You have it. That's why yours is brown. <laughs> and I like to always say, you don't truly know what's happening between the four walls of that couple's home. Yeah. So you know what? There's no need of even comparing. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Not even a need to compare. You know, Rocky, it's been absolutely a pleasure. I feel like I need to even have you on even longer because oh, that's my thing is I want everyone to feel that love. And I've always wanted that the way that they want to have that love in their life. Because yeah. I always say something, love is just the word. It's how you actually define that in your life. Yeah. Well, let's reframe it in a practical way for your listeners. I always say that the trouble is that we define love as a destination. Mm -hmm. So that's why the fairy tale works. That's why romantic comedies and dramas work because there's always the end. The end was, they, oh, they met, they fell in love, and that's the end. So mm -hmm. in our minds, we've interpreted love in real life as a destination. So when we don't get it, we think, oh, what happened? So I help people reframe it that love is a daily action. Yeah. It's not a destination. It's just a daily action. And it's just something we should all be trying to do. That's all. So if you take your focus off of pursuing love and you focus it on just pursuing a person, then love can be very, very simple and pragmatic. And it can be very fun and very exciting. Yes, it can. So tell me, Rocky, all these different ladies that we've kind of went through, and we can say the men as well, the different age brackets. Yeah. How would one, if they want to get with you to, they're considering or wanting marriage or, you know, even all the way to the end, if it didn't work out for you and you want to do it again, how can they get in touch with you? They can reach me on my website, www.claritycoach.ca, or you can just email me directly at info at claritycoach.ca and I will get right back to you. Yes, it's been an absolute pleasure and thank you for coming on to no. share with us all about love and what we do when we get stuck in ourselves, <laughs> but how to <laughs> redirect ourselves and really stand out and really find what it is that we really want inside of relationships because those things are very, very important. Yeah. So I want to take you to another part of the show where I For really sure. dive into your personality. Yeah, please. Let's get back about you and ask you a few questions. What right. would you tell your 10-year-old self about life? Oh, good question. I would probably say have fun. Yeah. Know what you want and trust what it is that you want. Don't listen to anybody. Awesome. 
And what is the farthest city that you've visited or you've traveled to from your birth city? Okay, so my birth city was Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. And so I live on the completely opposite end of the world in Vancouver, Canada. So that's pretty far. Vice versa, for me from Vancouver, I would say probably the furthest would be, if it's not going to be like linked up according to the Pacific Ocean, because really jumping across... uh, Right. <laughs> Ocean seems kind of short sometimes, but I would say Israel. Israel was probably one of my kind of like right in the middle there where there, it was a bit of a flight to get there. That was probably one of my favorite. I will have to tell you, you're the farthest right now over in, Tor- in Toronto <laughs> you know? because I am over here close to Hong Kong. We went to Hong Kong three, four months ago. We loved it. We had a great time. It's far from you. It's far. Hong Kong's far. So let's see here. If you could be any animal in the world, what animal would you be and why? Oh, good question again. Hmm. I have three that come to my mind, all for very specific reasons. So maybe I'll just throw them all out. So I would love to be an eagle because eagles just fly, know how to just glide. Mm-hmm. I'd love to be a horse because a horse is very empathetic. It actually magnifies the rider's emotions. That's really curious to me. But a dog would be probably my most favorite, number one, because a dog's just so loyal. That's probably more true to who I am. Right. And what's the story behind your name? <laughs> so my Chinese name is pronounced Gok Gay, uh-huh. which basically means country foundation. Okay. <laughs> and so at that time, my dad's name, his English name is Jackie, and he spells it with an I-E at the end of his name. Uh-huh. My mom wanted to keep the I-E in the family, so she's looking for a name like, oh my gosh, if I put I-E at the end, does that even make sense? Yeah. And so at that time, based on my Chinese name, what it means, the only thing they could come up with was Rocky. And there happened to be a famous race car driver mm-hmm. and a general that my dad knew at that time who was named Rocky. Yeah. So that's what they chose. I love it. I always like to ask the history of names because of my name, of course, yeah. the stories that come with it. But I have to tell the listeners, you can utilize those questions because those were questions I actually asked in my interviewing process with now that's having right. my husband. <laughs> that's right. So ask those particular questions because it does allow you to get the personality of an individual. Yeah. So Rocky, do you have anything else for us? Oh boy. If it's just parting words, yes. I would just say to the listeners that rest in believing that there's real hope for genuine love in your life. And don't let anybody lie to you and tell you that there's no hope for you, that there's no love for you. And we're all created to be able to both experience love and to give away love. So that's very possible. So just hang on to that. Well, there you have it, listeners, from Rocky himself. It has absolutely been a pleasure. We thank you for taking the time to tell us a little bit about your story and to help dive into the stories that I actually (laughs) brought up before as our characters. And everyone, remember... To stand out, be you. You don't have to be perfect. You just have to be you. And if you are interested or have a question or want to be on the show, you can go to tequiladoddard.com. We would love to hear your story. Until next time.